Hello YouTube. Hi, uh, yes. Wow, have I had a busy week? Yes. I've done a three day one to one tuition and then a one day one to one tuition and then I had a couple of days off and then I've done two days one to one tuition. Wow. I'm jiggered. I am. Yes. All the talking. Oh dear. Oh dear. Anyway, um, one of my patrons, Gary, um, a few years ago before he met me um, he went on a workshop with a very well known UK landscape photography workshop um, company yes whose name begins with the letters ASP and ends in the letter I anyway I'm not going to mention any names no <laughs> But um, when he went on this workshop, he took a shot. And I haven't seen this until last Saturday when Gary came round for a day. And he was saying to me, he said, what do you reckon to this shot, Andy? Because it actually came from this raw file, which he's taken on his 5D Mark IV. And yeah, I mean, fr from a... a a compositional point of view it's a it's okay i am um, shot on a very dreary day that's for certain but um, from what gary was saying to me the nature of the workshop was black and white and so they did what they did outside taking pictures under guidance from the workshop provider and then they went back to the hotel or wherever it was they, they were using as a base and they were in shown how to produce a black and white image from their own shots. And the shot Gary came away with was this. Oh, Jesus Christ. On a bike. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Ugh. I mean, that is just bloody atrocious. Absolutely shocking. I am... Um, God, it hurts my eyes. But um, we've got sharpening halos. We've got all sorts of lost um, eye frequency detail. Not that there is much eye frequency detail in this shot. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit out of focus when we go and have a look at the raw file. But these sharpening halos, you know, I mean, there is just no need for it and the image has just been pushed oh so way too far i mean it is ridiculous you know i mean i always like to try and keep things looking relatively real in my images that's the way i am um sometimes i'll use a bit of creative license and amplify certain portions of what's there with dodging and burning and you know i mean i've done a quick black and white from the image and my black and white is a lot more somber and looks like that I you know I mean I've got two lights on here so it, it sort of doesn't look to me quite quite as contrasty as it will look to you um, but it is a lot more somber and I, don't get me wrong I hardly ever do black and white I'll do them from time to time but they're a lot they take a lot of time to do an accurate black and white conversion but anyway neither in of that the thing is that there is a modern trend now for people to think oh well the light's dreary i'll have to go to black and white um the light's flat and pants i'll have to go to black and white it's, it's just i'm going to use a really 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 bad word now it's bullshit it is it is total bullshit there is there is nothing that demands black and white um depending on subject lighting N -n -n nothing nothing black and white is for when you there is so much in the image that is luminance based you don't really want to clutter it with color and you know i mean that's just the way i think anyway so i've done uh, one or two color variations on this raw file and you know i mean there's plenty of color that you can bring out of this image and you'll notice that 
it's as sharp as it needs to be and there is no halos we could go and have a look at this one which is sharp where it needs to be there's no excessive noise there's no excessive contrast and again there's no halos um, what else could we do uh, well you get my general idea so this is the raw file that Gary took and what we're going to do is just do a very quick process on it to come up with something that looks pretty much like this and so let's dive on in and see what we can do and what we're going to do is do a little bit in Lightroom we're going to do a little bit in Photoshop and then we're going to come back and do a little bit more in Lightroom and it's this constant thing that I'm trying to teach you to leverage the power of the two bits of software because let's face it everybody who's got Lightroom and who uses Lightroom has got a photography subscription to the Creative Cloud that's all they've got Photoshop as well and the thing is you should leverage the power of both bits of software to do what you really want to do with your images so let's get on and this as I said is Gary's raw file imported straight from the camera and I'm just going to get contrast under control because as we can see we've just got far too much black in here we've got too much black in here and of course the sky is very very washed out so what we're going to do is a straightforward simple process version swap uh, rather like that and then we'll zoom out and you can see yes we have flattened the contrast now before we go and do one or two adjustments here in Lightroom which we are going to do we just need to go and examine what is going on up here on this high contrast edge and where can I look where's a good place to look um, pretty much here I would suspect and we're at an 8 to 1 view and you can see here that we've got the grey of the sky and we've got this washed out olive green if you like of the hillside and then we've got this dark halo on the edge on the dark side of the high contrast boundary and then we've got a very light nearly white halo on the light side of the high contrast boundary and this is Lightroom's default sharpening which is shit it's crap I want you to get away from this idea that you need to sharpen your images in Lightroom because you don't you don't and sometimes you can get away with it in fact most times you can get away with it but sometimes you really can't because it does so much damage here why have we got this halo here and the thing is if we go and look at the hideous hideous black and white conversion this is what happens when you process the image with Lightroom sharpening on the raw file is a bloody nightmare so let's come back to the raw file and we'll come into the sharpening panel and all I'm going to do is quite simply turn the sharpening off and holy crap all that halo is, is gone because when we're in Photoshop we can bring sharpening to bear on this image which is streaks ahead of the sharpening or raw sharpening if you like capture sharpening that you can do in Lightroom streets ahead so that's what we're going to do part of the job we're going to do inside of Photoshop and we will end up with a sharp image and it won't have any halos in let's come back out to a fit to screen view and yes it is dull it's sharp on a dull day what the hell do you expect you're looking at a raw file people say raw files are inherently flat they're not really inherently flat they just they've just got a, a different native gamma than what we used to see and what you display on the screen so we have to go through this gamma conversion process but anyway we don't need to worry about that too much what i'm going to do to this raw file is i'm just going to brighten up the front of the image so we're going to drag up a graduated filter and we'll just feed in a little bit of exposure 
because when we did that process version swap as you can see if i open up the basics panel we've actually taken a stop of exposure out automatically it's just the way things are and we've also taken out 33 contrast so what we can do is we can start to add that back in in a semi-localized manner using um, the um, graduated filter in Photoshop so in, in Photoshop arc at me in Lightroom so we've added in just coming up to a stop well we have we've added a stop of uh, exposure in, and we could go up as high as plus 33 on contrast but I'm not going to and we're just going to inch that graduated filter up to perhaps about there I'm also going to warm it up just a little bit I'm also going to add a little tiny bit of dehaze yeah but I just want to open up the shadows a little bit put five blacks in and I'll just lift up the shadows a tad which sort of flattens it off again but it's brightened up the foreground of the image and we'll go click done on that and then I'm going to come and get a radial graduated filter and I'm just going to start it just outside the right hand edge of the image and then we're just going to tilt it down and narrow it out a little bit because I'm just looking at the trees or the foreground of the trees and the immediate foreground of the trees reflection in the water of the lake and we're just going to add a little spot of exposure there and we'll add a little bit of contrast and we're just going to add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of saturation and then just see if we can take that exposure up a little bit more and that will just about do so i'm going to click done on that i'm now going to come and warm the image up overall just a smidge because i sort of want to neutralize the blueness in the sky and i would have had a tendency to put a um, either a three or a six stop neutral density on this because there's odd artifacts from the ripples around the rocks where they go where the shadows on them go a little bit dark and then you've got these weird highlights reflected from the sky and there is a bit of ripple on the water as we can see we can see the ripples here and of course if we just slowed the um, exposure time or lengthen the exposure time by slowing the shutter we could have got a certain amount of blurring between um, these ripples or blurring of the ripples so either a three or probably a six stop i think a ten stop might have been a little bit too much but anyway it's neither here than that nor that the shot is what it is and so there we go so that's our starting base image and we are going to right click and we're going to go edit in editing photoshop cc 2019 yes we blooming well are so here we've got the image open in photoshop now i'm going to do something really strange now and i'm going to go command or control j twice okay so i've duplicated this image twice to two new layers and the purpose of this is to bring the sky tonally and brightness wise down to meet the land and the foreground and it's really easy the top layer we're going to switch to the multiply blend mode i am now going to select the layer cop layer one copy and the first layer as well and i'm just going to right click and go merge layers so now i've got this darker layer with the sky on that i want in this top layer and in the background i've got my foreground shot really really simple so what we've got to do now is to go and pull the sky out of here 
so we can see it over the top of this background layer so just temporarily going to turn that layer one copy the darker version off and just stick with the background and so we're going to get our quick select tool and we're just going to do a quick selection of the sky we're then going to go shift command or control i depending on where you're on a mac or windows machine and we're going to invert that selection we are then going to come and select select a mask but before we hit select a mask we hold down the shift key and then click select a mask to bring up the legacy refine edge dialogue and if you can see marching ants just come to this little contextual menu here and just select on black and then we'll go and pick up our refine edge brush tool and this is pretty much exactly the same thing as i did in the previous video so we're just going to come in and we'll start just outside the top of the image here and we will just paint and i, I it's funny i was doing this on a um, imac the other day and uh, yeah the brush tool turned into a pointer yeah so it's not just my machine it's other people's as well and there we go so i've just brushed over that edge and so now i've got a clean selection i'm going to leave it outputting to a new selection and so we'll just click ok and then i'm going to come and click on the eyeball for the darker layer and i'm going to activate the darker sky layer and we're going to hit the masking button but of course the mask is the wrong way around so we'll go and hit invert and so now i've brought the sky down to pretty much match the foreground so it, it looks a lot more in balance now than it did do we might just take the opacity down just a smidgen to around about 68 uh, 74 does that look all right i'll just go and pick the old mouse up and bring it back to 70 percent and I think that looks okay at 70%. The sky looks pretty much in balance with the foreground. Yes, it does. And, you know, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. Now, I mean, come on, kiddies. That wasn't really difficult, was it? No. We've got an image now which is pretty much in balance from the bottom to the top tonally wise and contrast wise it's not perfect contrast but we'll fix that in a minute but the thing is now that over white sky which looked over exposed in the original raw file has now been brought back and of course if we go and look at it at a hundred percent we'll hold down the space bar key and we'll go and look at that boundary there and yes don't forget the image has got absolutely no sharpening on it whatsoever and even where that little tree is up there we've got a perfect 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 edge blend how's that cool or what and it wasn't really all that difficult was it no now then we just need to do something we need to come over to the channels panel and you can see that selection that i made or the mask is sitting here and it's called layer one copy mask i'm going to duplicate that mask because when i come back to layers what i'm going to do now just to save uh, ram on my system i'm just going to go layer uh, flatten image uh, because i'm ready to rock and roll on this and the thing is if we go back to channels you can see that layer one mask has now been deleted because i've flattened the image and this is going to come in mighty useful at least once in the workflow so what are we going to do now we are going to come back to layers and we're going to add a new layer over the top and we're going to put this in the mm, soft light blend mode and i want to put a mid-tone mask over this now mid-tone masks are mighty useful and you never see anybody use them i use them quite a lot 
But the midtown masks in Lumenzia can look a little bit odd because highlights and shadows should be dark in a midtone mask and obviously the midtones should be light so inside Lumenzi's midtone masks they are slightly skewed um, why Greg's designed them this way he must have his reasons I don't know what they are so what I have a tendency to do is snatch these two points off the curve and then I will make them relatively central and now you can see that we've got highlights in the sky which are dark and we've got shadows in the foreground which are dark I'm just going to emphasize the contrast a little bit by making the darks darker and then I will bring up the lights rather like that just towards the end of the histogram and then I might just play around with the gamma slider and just get those midtones dialed in just a little bit rather like that because I'm going to do a colour dodge um, adjustment now and I want a fairly restricted mask so anyway what are we going to do well, we might just come into the colour conversion for the mask as well and take out the blues the magentas and the cyans and then i might thump up the greens that'll just make some of the foliage on the trees go a little bit lighter and thump up the yellows and that'll make them go lighter as well so we'll come into this layer one which is indeed our color dodge layer and we'll just click the masking icon in lumenzia and there we go so now i can come in with a brush tool painting with this uh, yellow color i might actually just go and warm that up just a little bit by making it go slightly orange and uh, painting at an opacity of 25 percent in a flow of 100 some people actually keep the opacity up near 100 and change the flow and um, six of one half a dozen of the other whichever way floats your boat mm. either way gives pretty much the same degree of control so i'm just going to start to lay in some color here and because we're only working at a relatively low opacity i can sort of bring out color in the far far line of trees and we'll just take a little bit across there bring it all the way back paint over the foreground reflections and then work again closer to uh, the actual right hand side of the image so we're actually getting an increased um, dodge effect as we come closer to the camera and we can go and warm up some of that rock underneath the um, underneath the water line there and yeah that's looking all rather sexy now i can emphasize all along that hillside there and you'll notice in places i've just gone over the sky mm. cause I'm careless yes but not to worry because we can simply put this layer in a new group all on its little Jack Jones and then we can go select load selection and this is where that copy of that original sky mask comes in and so we'll go and click OK and then we'll add that as a group mask but of course it's the wrong way around isn't it so we'll just click invert so we've got our, sa our um, color dodge or our saturation or whatever you want to do we've got that dialed in and uh, but we've got rid of the overspill out of the sky we might want to now just go shift out or option command or control e and produce ourselves a stamp visible layer and we're going to put this in the soft light blend mode and now we've got a i was going to say shit load but that would be wrong wouldn't it so we've got a shed load yes of contrast suddenly come back into this image 
and I don't want that much contrast because we have to do things relatively slowly but that's looking quite nice I'm thinking that is looking a-okay I might just put a white mask on there and then come in with a black brush probably at around the upper 30s lower 40s and we might just come and dial that out of some of these uh, foreground rocks just ever so slightly and uh, just keep going and just sort of feather it out we'll play go with a slightly bigger brush and i just want to sort of dumb the highlights down in the water ever so slightly because this layer does increase the contrast in those highlights but it's doing all right i'm quite happy with that let's just go and see what we can do with a levels adjustment layer and we're just going to lift the white point or the white slider over towards the end of the histogram and you'll notice how these trees in this area is brightened up of course the rest of the image is brightened up but if i go to the levels mask properties and i invert it then i can't see that levels adjustment but if i then come in with a white brush and i just dial in there and I can just gradually reveal that adjustment there and then we'll come in with a smaller brush and we will just fade it off rather like that along that water line there and we need to keep a fall off of contrast to emphasize the distance in the shot and I'm quite liking that to be honest with you now then we come to the thorny little problem of sharpening yeah now what you can do is go to google and type into google pixel genius mm. i repeat pixel genius and um, pixel genius is a collaboration or was a collaboration between Jeff Shuey and one or two other real super, super gurus of image processing. And Pixel Genius is um, a, a capture sharpener, it's a creative sharpener, and it's also a print output sharpener. And the print output sharpening module of um, Pixel Genius um, the actual product you're looking for is called photo kit 2 and the actual um, print output photo kit 2 module is built into the background of the print module inside a lightroom that is why i have a tendency to print out of lightroom now as opposed to photoshop um yes but anyway it's neither here nor there what we're going to do is we're going to go to file automate and i'm going to go for photo kit creative sharpener 2. so what i suggest you do is to go onto the interweb do a google search for it go and find it download it for mac or windows or linux and then install it on your machine and bring it into photoshop and uh, yes we can now go and click on the creative sharpener um, anybody you sometimes you will get this error code on the latest iterations of photoshop it doesn't matter just click ok and it will fire up anyway and anybody who's bought my sharpening videos yes mm, will be or should be familiar with the videos that i've done on there about pixel genius and the pixel genius toolbox inside and uh, photo kit yeah so anyway I'm waffling and I shouldn't do so we'll just click to bring the um, preview up to a hundred percent and we'll turn the preview on and what we want is photo kit creative sharpener 2 and inside the set inside there that we're looking for is sharpening effect and the effect is sharpen narrow edges 3 and we are just going to go and click OK and we've just got to wait for that and you'll see it's now put this sharp n3 layer 
over the top of our image in this here layer stack and I'll pull out the layer stack so you can see and it's here so if I just sort of um, pull that out so I'm not hiding my own bloody toolbar and I go in and view the image at 100% you can see it's um, where my glasses gone where have my glasses gone there they are yeah I'll give you a little tip when you're doing a lot of tonal and color processing if you do wear glasses you might sometimes find it beneficial to take them off yeah i do but when it comes to sharpening i go and put them back on again so it's a little bit over sharp here in the foreground so what we're going to do is you can see the opacity of this layer is 50 percent i'm actually going to dumb that down just a little bit to around about 20 percent and then what we'll do is hold down the spacebar key and we'll come and have a look at this edge and don't bear in mind we are at 100 percent and if i turn that off you can see this edge here which is beautiful and clean beautiful and clean no artifacting on it whatsoever but it's not sharp if i turn this layer on that is now as sharp as it was as it would be inside of lightroom but if we bring it up to 1200 percent magnification we can see there is just the start of a vestige of a halo at 1200 percent mag but it's nowhere near as aggressive or as visible as the sharpening was initially in lightroom and that was only at 800 percent and we were getting a white halo here and a black halo here so as i said to you way back in the video we can do vastly superior sharpening inside of photoshop and we can do in lightroom anyway i'm just going to bring that down to a fit to screen view and i'm going to go file and i'm going to go save and we will come back to lightroom and here is our creation and uh, let's go and have a look at it in lightroom take it up to 100 percent as an archival image you do not need that any sharper not in any way shape or form and then if you wanted to do a print off that you would open that back up in photoshop perhaps and then go and put the print sharpener out of photo kit on it or you just transpose it into the print module and just use the print sharpening inside the print module or Lightroom, which is actually Pixel Genius Photo Kit Sharpener 2 for print built in to the background. That's why it works so well. But we've got a boatload of detail in here, which if we go and have a look at um, the workshop provider's black and white processing of Gary's image, Ooh, ooh, yeah mm. so what's the image we've just done christ that's the one edit five yes nearly forgot our place there now all i'm going to do inside of uh, lightroom is come to effects and i'm just going to get a highlight priority vignette bring it down to minus 20 i'm going to drop the midpoint all the way to zero and i'm going to take the feather all the way to a hundred i'm then going to get a radial filter and we're just going to stay outside of the edge of the uh, image and then we'll just bring it in and position it on the edge rather like that because don't forget the maximum value or the maximum visibility of the adjustment the adjustment we're about to make is on that point when we've got invert selected and so we're going to brighten this image but the brightness will fall off from the center to the edge okay so what we'll do i'll just pick up the mouse and we will just increase the exposure a little bit and we might just add a little touch of clarity in there maybe a little touch of warmth and i think that looks super 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 sexy do we need it to go up there possibly not let's just bring it down a little bit Let's expand it across the horizon or the waterline rather like that. 
let's go and put a little bit of contrast in there as well yeah and i'm relatively happy with that so you know we've got that level of processing and that level of image detail that level of sharpness that balance in the image and we are creating we are creating a certain amount of lighting in there um, we're using a little bit of creative license but as you can see there is vestiges of highlights in the actual raw file itself so all we're doing really is amplifying what is there um, we're amplifying it quite a lot but we're amplifying it without the penalty of noise or the penalty of sharpening halos so anyway there you go hope you like that gary hope you've uh, got something useful out of that guys and girls and um, if we just go and i mean we could go and do a black and white conversion from this image or gary can he can process it whichever way he likes but um yeah i mean that's the sort of image that if it's converted to black and white that's what it will look like and then you can sort of play around with that but um yeah i mean i quite like the color that you can bring out tease out and modify um within this existing raw file here without really all that much effort anyway there you go guys i'm going to shut up now i um, hope you've got something useful out of that i um, hope you've enjoyed it if you have give it a thumbs up please leave a comment below um, if you did like it please give me some ideas for other videos that you'd like to see um, to do with photoshop or to do with lightroom and um, i might even start doing some videos outside taking pictures before the end of this year but i've just got to get myself sorted out and then i've got to get over to norway take a group of, a group of guys out there at the end of september and then who knows what the hell's going to happen after that yes hello anyway um, as I said, hope you like that, guys, and uh, I shall see you again in the next one. Toodaloo.